Chapter 67 Frank Frank was no expert on ghosts, but the dead legionnaires must have all been demigods because they were totally ADHD. They clawed their way from the pit, then milled about aimlessly, chest bumping each other for no apparent reason, pushing one another back into the chasm, shooting arrows into the air as if trying to kill flies, and occasionally, out of sheer luck, throwing a javelin, a sword, or an ally in the direction of the enemy. Meanwhile, the army of monsters got thicker and angrier. Earthborn threw volleys of stones that plowed into the zombie legionnaires, crushing them like paper. Female demons with mismatched legs and fiery hair, Frank guessed that they were in Pusai, gnashed their fangs and shouted orders at the other monsters. A dozen cyclops advanced on the crumbling bridges, while the seal-shaped humanoids, telekines, like Frank had seen in Atlanta, lobbed vials of Greek fire across the chasm. There were even some wild centaurs in the mix, shooting flaming arrows and trampling their smaller allies under hoof. In fact, most of the enemy seemed to be armed with some kind of fiery weapon. Despite his new fireproof pouch, Frank found that extremely uncool. He pushed to the crowd of dead Romans, shooting down monsters until his arrows were spent, slowly making his way towards his friends. A little late, he realized, duh, he should turn into something big and powerful like a bear or a dragon. As soon as, as soon as the thought occurred, pain flared in his arm. He stumbled, looked down, and was incredulous to find an arrow shaft protruding from his left bicep. His sleeve was soaked in blood. The sight made him dizzy. Mostly, it made him angry. He tried to turn into a dragon, with no luck. The pain made it too hard to focus. Maybe he couldn't change shape while he was wounded. Great, he thought. Now I find out. He dropped his bow and picked up a sword from the fallen. Well, he wasn't actually sure what it was. Some sort of reptilian lady warrior with snake trunks instead of legs? He slashed his way forward, trying to ignore the pain and the blood dripping down his arm. About five meters ahead, Nico was swinging his black sword with one hand, holding the separate of Diocletian aloft with the other. He kept shouting orders at the legionnaires, but they paid him no attention. Of course not, Frank thought. He's Greek. Jason and Piper stood at Nico's back. Jason summoned gusts of wind to blast aside javelins and swords. He deflected a vial of Greek fire right up the throat of a griffin, which burst into flames and spiraled into the pit. Piper put up her new sword to good use, while spraying food at the cornucopia in her other hand, using hams, chickens, apples, and oranges to intercept missiles. The air above the chasm turned into a fireworks show of flaming projectiles, exploding rocks, and fresh produce. Still, Frank's friends couldn't hold out forever. Jason's face was already beaded with sweat. He kept shouting in Latin, Form ranks! But the dead legionnaires wouldn't listen to him either. Some of the zombies were helpful just by standing in the way, blocking monsters and taking fire. If they kept getting mowed down, though, there wouldn't be enough left to organize. Make way! Frank shouted. To his surprise, the dead legionnaires parted for him. The closest ones turned and stared at him with blank eyes, as if waiting for further orders. Oh, great! Frank mumbled. In Venice, Mars had warned him that his true test of leadership was coming. Frank's ghostly ancestor had urged him to take charge. But if these dead Romans wouldn't listen to Jason, why should they listen to him? Because he was a child of Mars? Or maybe... The truth hit him. Jason wasn't quite Roman anymore. His time at Camp Half-Blood had changed him. Reyna had recognized that. Apparently, so did the undead legionnaires. If Jason no longer gave off the right sort of vibe, or aura of a Roman leader... Frank made it to his friends as a wave of Cyclops crashed into them. He lifted his sword to parry a Cyclops' club, then stabbed the monster in the leg, sending him backwards into the pit. Another one charged. Frank managed to impale him, but blood loss was making him weak. His vision blurred. His ears rang.